Hello everyone and welcome to How Pros Set Up Hammocks, presented by Kingsfire. For our example, you will want a hammock, two climbing grade carabiners, some 5 to 8 millimeter accessory cord, and something to protect the trees. I can't emphasize enough the importance of protecting trees. When I say how pros set up hammocks, the differentiating factor is that pros protect trees. The first thing we'll want to do is assess the scene safety. I've chosen a spot in the shade that is relatively flat and free from obstructions. Be on the lookout for any wildlife you may be disturbing, such as this turtle. And also check the tree canopy for any loose branches or items that may fall. So in order to set up a hammock, we're going to have to learn a couple knots. We're going to be using a figure eight on a bite. This is a brief example of how to set one up, but you may want to check out some other videos for more detail on the specifics. This is a very handy knot that is used universally in a number of applications. It is high load bearing, very secure, and relatively easy to tie and untie. Now that we have our figure eight on a bite, we're going to pass the rope around the tree and with the tail remaining, pass it to the loop that we've created, thus throttling or girdling the tree. This next knot is known as a clove hitch and is by far my favorite knot. Very simple. Create two loops in a sequence, in line, pass them behind each other, and once you have these two loops lined up, pass a carabiner or other clipping mechanism through the loops and pull on the opposite ends to secure your clove hitch. Once secured, the knot can also be easily adjusted. If I wanted to shorten the length of this setup, I would just pass some slack back through the knot, pull out the difference, and then tighten it as so, as sloppily so, I suppose. Repeat the process on both sides, and then simply clip your carabiner to your hammock. Notice those beautifully protected trees. I set this up relatively high. The reason you want to do this is because as soon as you weight this, there will be some slack in the system that gets taken up and you'll end up in a good position. Hi there. And now it's time for King Spire's awesome camp hacks. If you happen to own a sleeping bag with a foot zipper like this, here's a much more effective way to sleep in a sleeping bag. Traditionally, if you sleep in a sleeping bag in a hammock, you end up compressing all of the insulation underneath you. By passing your hammock through your sleeping bag, you avoid that, keeping loft below and above you, and setting up a much warmer night for yourself. Hammocks are, by design, a hot weather camping accessory. But in a pinch, this setup works quite well. I'd say it's probably even warmer than sleeping directly on the ground. Not much though. You can pull your sleeping bag all the way over your face, and as an added bonus, you can keep insects and other buzzards out when you're trying to get a good night's rest. Another neat trick is to set up an accessory line anytime you set up a hammock. It has a multitude of uses, including hanging your shoes, hanging other accessories, and in some sense it can aid you getting in and out of the hammock if you find that to be difficult. You can use the figure eight, or the clove hitch, or any other number of knots to secure this line. It also gives a little bit more structure to your hammock if you find it to be sagging. Ta-da! Now my last and favorite trick is the double hammock setup. Double hammocks serve a number of purposes. First, you can put extra accessories into your second hammock. You can actually spread out your weight across two hammocks, but my favorite is to use it as a bug net. By having the accessory line in place already, a little bit of breathing room is created and you end up with a tented space that's actually quite comfortable and private. Lastly, and most importantly, put everything back where you found it. Leave no trace, everyone. 